questions. I can go. Hi, my name is Bakri al I'm president of Northern Cyprus Cultural Society. I'm also president of Polytrade International Corp and a candidate for Loudoun County Supervisor. I have a two-part question for you. One, uh, there's been a lot of talk about uh, the danger of uh, Iran being a nuclear uh, state in the region and for effect in the region. Um, right now, Israel is not a member of the uh, Nuclear Non-Proliferation uh, Treaty. Uh, do you see that uh, if they would comply, com would be able to uh, sign on to that, uh, would that uh, help re release the tension in the, uh, in the area? And the second part of the question is uh, with regards to the flotilla. If, I mean, Israel knew that uh, the flotilla was an international aid uh, delivering, uh, going towards Gaza. So, and Israel also knows that Turkey is an ally of both US and Israel. So why, if it was concerned, as Congressman Wackler said, that, uh, that they might have some arms, why did it not uh, board the ship while it was still on land in Istanbul and inspect it instead of, and, and be allowed to escort it if it was concerned that something's gonna happen in between. And for future events, uh, would Turkey uh, consider maybe inviting Israel for uh, maybe another flotilla that might be uh, going over there? Or do you think that Israel might have had uh, different reasons and it was just an excuse as far as the the arms, maybe they do not want to see a democratically elected Gaza state to be strong by having uh, any kind of humanitarian or uh, building uh, material. Prime Minister Erdogan is on record a number of times that we want a nuclear free Middle East that includes Israel. We feel that not signing up to the NPT should not be should not allow any country to, um, to escape international scrutiny. That said, we also recognize Israel's legitimate interest, um, security interest that they, ha that they have in the region. However, I have a feeling, not being a, an expert on nuclear technology, I have a feeling that the, the NPT regime is increasingly going to force uh, countries um, to be more open to international inspection. Uh, there is, an, I think, one, um, one added value of the Iran nuclear issue. It has brought forward globally who owns nuclear weapons and who is part of NPT or not and who escapes international scrutiny because of what. So I think uh, and I, the, the recent uh, you, the, the conference that took place, uh, the nuclear conference that took place, I think, had um, a commitment by Israel or a calling upon Israel by 2012, if I'm uh, mistaken, to be more transparent about uh, any nuclear weapons they have. On the flotilla incident, let me uh, underline that the NGO in question, it is an NGO that, that organized the flotilla with uh, many other NGOs abroad, which included 32 uh, country, uh, nationals from 32 other countries. Two German parliamentarians, the Holocaust survivor, many other journalists, many different peoples from all over the place, Irish, uh, Greeks, uh, and others. All we could do is we inspected the ships and also searched everyone physically before they entered the ships and made sure that there were no weapons or anything that could be described beyond humanitarian aid were on those ships. There were no weapons or else on those ships when they left the Turkish port. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I'm David Mack from the Middle East Institute, and I'd like to get you a little bit away from the flotilla incident and have you um, give us your thoughts 
about how the United States and Turkey might work together in partnership to deal with the basic um, fundamental problems that have led to this, that is the absence of a, a meaningful peace process between Israel and the Palestinians and between Israel and Syria and Lebanon. Um, I understand that nationalist sentiments are running very high in Turkey. My impression is they're running pretty high in Israel as well. Um, will this be a problem? Will it be a problem for the Turkish government to join with us in a full partnership um, uh, on trying to revitalize the peace process? Well, thank you. That's a very good question. Prime Minister Erdogan, four days before the Gaza war, met with then Prime Minister Olmert for six hours in his private mansion. And they discussed the, the next round of Syrian-Israeli talks, which almost 95% was concluded, and there were some differences on a number of sentences and words. Unfortunately, Prime Minister Olmert then indicated that he would get back to us very soon after he would return to Israel. Turkey offered, including mediation between Hamas and is uh, Israel on the release of Gilad Shalit, and including on facilitating a peace process that would bring actors like Hamas and others into a more moderate position so that an, an, an engagement could be possible. But unfortunately, we never heard from Prime Minister Olmert. But four days later, we woke up with the news that the, the war in Gaza started. Turkey has brought Pakistan and Israel together. They had no relations whatsoever. Turkey facilitated four rounds of talks between Israel and Syria. Turkey continues to talk to both Hamas and Fatah to bring them together as difficult as it may be. And we continue to offer our good, good offices and services if there is a request to be a mediator, a dialogue facilitator, uh, a party that could be influencing the process constructively if the sides agree to. But let's make no mistake. Turkey doesn't get sleepless over whether X and Y countries invite us to mediate between their conflicts. We have enough issues on our plate. We only can be useful and are interested in mediating when the two sides of the conflict of the conflict would like Turkey to see there. We know Syria wants Turkey to mediate between Israel and Syria. And if Israel wants Turkey to mediate, continue to revive those talks, we would be happy to continue. But as I said, uh, the prerequisites for those are that the two sides agree that Turkey should be coming in. 